we're gone. And today we're here in the Champions Club Suites with uh, the nation's SID, Rob Burline. How's it going, Rob? Oh, I'm just filling in for uh, my guy Warren today. He's a little bit under the weather, so I'm going to try not to screw this up too bad for him today. <laughs> um, and then we have sports editor Keeson Ramirez. How you doing, Keeson? Good to be back. Uh, new setting. You think Rob's here? Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, sure. yeah. We, we couldn't pass up the opportunity to get Rob on the show. Rob, Rob's one of our favorite guys. Uh, yeah, works for the Texas State Athletics Department. Man, lovely, lovely place we got here. Club suites. You know, we're kind of going Hollywood here, Rob. I know. We uh, we're usually down at the level below us here in the press box, and that's what you guys usually see. I get to come up here maybe twice a year. Bobcat Bananas and other functions, but this is this is where it's at. So after you make your millions, you can come up here after graduation. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And this week is especially important. It's homecoming. You know, um, a lot of alumni is going to be here. A lot of people are going to come back to, to where it started for them. And, and it's important because the Bobcats will play Idaho. Idaho 0-2 in the Sun Belt. Uh, Texas State, this will be the first conference game on top of uh, homecoming. Should be a packed-out stadium. What's your analysis, Keesum, on, on, on what uh, the Bobcat fans should look out for in uh, Saturday's matchup against the Vandals? Coach Rand said it in the, his lunch on Tuesday that, you know, the intensity in conference play kind of picks up because, you know, the games matter more and they have more weight. And if you look at Idaho, they're a very – it's a very, very interesting dichotomy with this team. Uh, they're, you know, they're pass heavy. Uh, they don't run the ball very well. And Texas State is different in that regard. They're more balanced. So look for, look for Idaho to, you know, utilize the pass more and see if their running game gets going. Yeah, and the Bobcats, have, you know, the last couple of weeks, Tulsa and Illinois were thought to be, you know, pass-heavy offenses coming in, and then they tried to exploit the run. So, you know, we'll get into Matt Linehan, the Idaho quarterback. Also important for the Bobcats to respect the run and, and not get, you know, a little bit, you know, make them one-dimensional, which Tulsa and Illinois uh, had a little bit of success doing both the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Rob makes a great point about Matt Linehan. Uh, first in the Sun Belt in completions per game completed, six in the country. Uh, he makes that offense go. Uh, I believe they're top 30 in the country in total offense, and that's a that's with a run game that's averaging less than 70 yards per game on the ground. Uh, that's the worst in the Sun Belt Conference. So Bobcats should definitely see some success uh, come Saturday on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, the thing about Matt Linehan too, he's just a freshman. Uh, he's second most... Uh, total passing yards as a freshman. Uh, he's very young, so he, he might be a little different going on the road, playing a uh, conference game. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, the defense really needs to, you know, get pressure on him because if they can really swallow up the pass, I mean, they, they don't really have a running game that they can trust uh, very often. So that's something to definitely look out for. And the other thing we, we talk about Idaho's offense is the architect behind it is Paul Petrino. He's the brother of Bobby Petrino, of course, the great coach at Arkansas, Louisville. Um, you know, he's been all over. He he gets the great up-tempo offenses and Paul runs that same philosophy and seems like Paul's got his guy in Linehan and that offense is starting to roll the way the Petrinos do. Yeah, and it's amazing that just like you mentioned, he's a freshman, Matt Linehan, running an offense like that, top 30 in the country in pass uh, and total offense, that's pretty impressive. And I think the Bobcats need to be careful a little bit, um, you know, they're great, great against the rush defense. But last year, I remember, you know, the road trip. Rob will tell you is not it's not the most fun. Like, what is it, a Kibby Dome? The Kibby Dome. It's uh, it's it's quite an excursion. We left here last year <laughs> about 5 p.m. We got up to Idaho about nine, about you know, four and a half hours later with the time difference. I don't know what the actual time was. Um, and then it was an hour over to the over to the stadium and back. So it's you know one of these trips. This is Idaho and. Next year, next couple of years, we'll talk about Appalachian State. The Sun Belt and how it's spread out is you could go all the way from Boone, North Carolina to Moscow, Idaho, which is pretty much in Washington because it is 20 minutes away from Washington State. In fact, Washington State usually utilizes um, the best western in Moscow. Um, a lot of the baseball teams that play at Washington State use there and vice versa. So it's very close. It's not like eastern Idaho. It's west Idaho. You're, you're almost in Washington when you're there. So it's going to be quite of a, a travel for Idaho to come. But that's nothing, you know, they're used to. They went all the way to, to Florida, and then they just sat there until the game got rained <laughs> out got rained earlier out. this year. But Idaho's used to traveling, so the long distance isn't really going to affect them as much maybe as it does teams that have to go up there. Yeah, and I just remember us talking last year about that about that road trip and how and how fun it was. But the Bobcats went up there uh, last year. That was the game that clinched them to be bowl eligible, uh, second fastest in FBS history, reaching that level. But uh, last year, you know, 
Petrino was there. A lot of people thought it was the run that was going to kind of hurt the Bobcats. It was a run. It was a run last year. I can't remember his name, but I remember he got a, a 150 plus yards and, and you know the game was close there for a little bit. You know, the Bobcats started off really well. I believe Greg Mayer started off with an interception last year. And then he comes back and the Bobcats do really well, but the running game of Idaho kind of surprised many people. So hopefully when the Vandals come here, that less than 70 yards per, per ground game, you know, um, per game on the ground, excuse me, uh, doesn't stifle the Bobcats on Saturday. And, and as Rob said, you know, the last two weeks they played Illinois and Tulsa, two teams that aren't really run heavy, and they both, you know, put up 150 yards plus against them. So, I mean, the, the defense, John Thompson's defense, you know, very aggressive style, kind of frenetic, kind of everywhere. Um, it hasn't had success against the run the last two weeks. Um, if that continues, that trend continues, it's going to be tough for the Bobcats to win because, you know, the team can – can uh, bleed the clock a little bit more, take the Bobcats offense off the field. So if Idaho has, you know, 150 yards like that, that's going to be a very, very big problem for this team. But, of course, you know, we've talked about the, the Idaho offense. Let's, let's talk about the, the challenge, and we'll get into a layer that Idaho defense has to face. And Tyler Jones and Rob Lowe and Bradley Beller, the way this offense is clicking, you know, last week against Tulsa, they didn't necessarily have the greatest game in, in terms of what they'd done the first three weeks. But once they got in overtime and it was do or die time, T. Jones just became T. Yeah. Jones. And it was, you know, I was sitting up in the press box in Tulsa, and it was, you know, that do or die play to Jay Fiskanes, have to score in the end. So I was like, oh, geez, they got to get it. Then, you know, the long completion to Miller, I think, was a, a third and 11, third and 12, you know, something like that. And that was, I mean, what can you say about T. Jones? He just makes plays. And so, you know, no matter what, who the Bobcats face, and Coach Fran alluded to this this week, is that they're going to be in every ball game, the Sun Belt Conference. There's no team that's, you know, that far in terms of talent above them. And if they are maybe a little bit above in talent, Tyler Jones has that it factor that can really just neutralize everything. And especially at home, Gotta like the Bobcats chances. Yeah, definitely I agree with you. And Wednesday's column that uh Keeson wrote with uh, lunch with Coach Fran, uh some things that stood out to me was cool, calm and collected. That is Tyler Jones. I mean, literally when you look at that guy, you talk to him, it's almost like the the situation doesn't phase him. It's like he's been there, done that. That's what happens when you recruit champions. That's what happens when you win a state championship in the state of Texas. So he's definitely got it going on. And then Bradley Miller, the catch, you know, uh in my eyes, should have been a sports center top 10 play, uh, you know, with the situation that was going on. I mean, that was a beautiful catch he made on the sideline. And, and with the circumstances, I thought he did really well. Offensively, the Bobcats are just dynamic. You know, over 500-plus yards uh, per game total offense. That's second in the Sun Belt. Uh, Tyler Jones has definitely got it clicking. Bradley Miller's starting to get into his own now. Jafis Gaines, Ben Isa. Then you bring back Rob Lowe this week, who missed uh, last week's game against Tulsa. Give me a handful for for uh, uh, for the Vandals come Saturday. And Coach Fran said that you know talking about Tyler Jones, how he's kind of the, the silent leader of the team. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. He kind of masks and he lets his play on the field kind of you know set the set the tone for the team. And they've rallied around him. You can tell that you know they really enjoy playing with him. They really uh, have a lot of confidence in his throw, and he can make any throw on the field now versus last year where he was a little bit more limited with his you know his throwing angles. And uh, this is a team that you know they they really trust this guy, and that's really key because this team will only go as far as Tyler Jones goes. And uh, that's going to mean a lot, you know, when you play Lafayette and Louisiana Monroe and Georgia Southern teams that are going to be a little bit more tougher. Tyler Jones is when he, when they need him, he's he's been there for for this year. And we'll see if the Bobcats have have another weapon off the off the bench this you know this year. Is that the last first two first four games they've really had just either Lowe and Franks. The last week it was Franks and Gay. Now we'll see if it's Lowe, Franks and Gay. And, you know, you never know about what the, you know, about other guys that can show up. As soon as there's a different guy that shows up every week, hopefully Ryan Carton gets back healthy this week. Brandon Sarabia gets back healthy this week. You know, so really the full complement of this offense is just a, just a huge thing and difficult for anybody to stop because just as you think, okay, I'm going to stop Rob Lowe, well, here comes Tim Gay, the thumper. Okay, I'm going to stop Bradley Miller. Well, there goes Ben Isaac down the sidelines for you. So I really, it's really hard for any defense in the Sun Belt to, to slow down the Bobcats. I completely agree. And, and, you know, we've been talking about a lot of the guys. I guess it's time to go into uh, the spotlight. Uh, you know, this is our segment where we kind of highlight two players on offense and defense each and we kind of talk about who we think is going to influence the game. Uh, for me, offensively, I'd like to start off with Rob Lowe. I think you told me earlier, 12th in the country in all-purpose yards. He'll be back this year. Uh, Sunbelt's leading rusher at the time uh, before the um, 
before he set out Tulsa's game. Be vital to what the Bobcats do. Uh, Idaho, not very good rush defense. I believe they're tied with actually Texas State, uh, ninth in the conference in um, rushing yards allowed per game. So I think Rob Lowe is going to be a big factor come uh, Saturday's game against the Vandals. Defensively, I'm looking at Michael Odiari. Uh, he had 13 tackles, uh, three of them for loss against uh, Tulsa. He's really important because if you don't get pressure to Matt Linehan, their offense has a lot of time to you know succeed. And if he can get pressure, if he can get some tackles on the edge, set the edge, this will be a lot easier test for the Bobcats. And I'm just going to expound on the play of Tyler Jones. Is you know everyone says he's a playmaker, he does this and that. Well, I looked up the numbers this week, and quantifiably, he is ninth in the country in terms of completions this year um he's 16th in the country in terms of passing touchdowns with 11 so this isn't a guy that just oh he's cool under pressure he is getting it done as better if not the best than anybody in the country and you know his passing efficiency is top 20 he's just top 30 in just about every category and then we won't even get into you know he's not the true you know option i'm going to run for 200 yards a game like we saw with the navy quarterbacks but he can also run it with his legs and you know last week against Tulsa it was kind of tough going early on but then the second half he started to find some running lanes and I mean it's just really tough when you got a guy that's just rolling like T Jones is. Yeah second on the second on the team too in rushing yards uh, pretty impressive from a quarterback keeping his poise and not looking to run first I think that's that's really important uh, my other guy I know I said David Mims before the show but I'm going to change it up a little bit I think I'm going to go Greg Mager and here's why all American punter Austin Raquel, uh 50 punts I mean 50 yards uh, per, per punt that he's getting that's First in the Sun Belt, second in the nat- uh, nation behind uh, Kyle Christie of Florida. I mean, even the net punt yards. Uh, <laughs> Vandals do a great job on punt coverage. They're second in the nation as well. So I think Greg Mager, uh, let's see what the Bobcats can do. Uh, Coach Franchoni said Tuesday when I interviewed him that they kind of haven't let Greg out of the bag yet when it's on punt coverage and punt return. So um, we'll see what he can do and see if he can neutralize that uh, the great punter in Austin or Cal uh, come Saturday. For the second straight podcast, I'm going to plug uh, Will Johnson. I think he's a really important player going against Raquel, All-American punter, uh, punter of the week last week. Uh, if he can creating and maintaining field position, which uh, Texas State had in the first half, they kind of squandered a little bit of that. If they can create positive field position and put Idaho with a long uh, stretch of field, uh, that's going to be really key for this team because if you have Idaho and they're you know stuck at their 15, stuck at their 10, it's it's going to be a long, uh, tough sledding for sure. And how important was Johnson's field goal last week? 49 yeah. yarder yeah. first attempt of the year. I mean that was I mean that field goal was the difference in the game. Obviously, you know without that, Bobcats don't make it to to overtime, and you know can't say more. About about you know Will Johnson, but I want to go the the other obvious choice, David Mayo. Um, you know, we talked about the outstanding season in the nation that Tyler Jones has had. David Mayo, everyone knows he had 20 tackles, most in the Sun Belt last week. He is now third in the country in the entire country in terms of total tackles this year with 56, 14 per game. I mean, he's just. I mean, you've got two guys playing at an All American level. So, I mean, between Mayo and Jones, Bobcats are in good shape every Saturday. Yeah. Or Tuesday or Thursday, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, funky schedule this year. Um, ESPN all over. You almost thought that they sponsored our uh, Texas State. So that's really good. And then we're going to go into by the numbers. Uh, my first number. 176.2 uh, passing yards is what the Bobcats are giving up per game on defense. That's third in the Sun Belt. That's important. Uh, Idaho, I believe, gets three, 303 yards uh, per game through the air with Matt Lanahan. Uh, so that's vital for the Bobcats to, you know, stay stay hungry, stay looking for the ball in the air and not give up as many pass yards. That way you, ne- you negate the pass yards and you negate what they do in the air. Bobcats are looking pretty come Saturday against Idaho. My, uh, my first number is one. Uh, that's how many teams that rush for less yards per game than Idaho and the entire FBS. Um, they're not a very run-heavy team, and they really struggle in that regard. And if that trend continues, it's I mean, that really bodes well for the Bobcats. Keeping it simple with the yeah. number one. <laughs> and I'm going to go with uh, the number 20. That is the number of games the Bobcats will play after this Saturday against Idaho. Bobcats can get through this game, get to 3-2. and two. They get a chance to rush their legs a little bit. They'll have 10 days before Lafayette comes in on the 14th, and then another 11 days before they have to see Monroe down in Monroe on uh, October 25th. So Bobcats need to get through this one. Then you can rest some legs, and all those guys that have been in and out of the lineup will be ready to go here. Yeah, definitely. And then I think my other number is going to be 227.2 yards. That's uh, that's the rushing yards that the Bobcats average per game. <laughs> Vandals give up 224. Uh, nothing has to give there. 
clearly the, I think we kind of know what the what the key to success there is. I think the Bobcats are going to come out, try to run the ball against a poor Idaho rush defense, and 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 take the ball game using the ground come Saturday. My second number is uh, six. That's how many games David Mayo has got 10-plus tackles in. Uh, eight of his last nine, he's got 10. He had t- career-high 20 against uh, uh, Tulsa. And without uh, Michael Rackbo, he's averaging 15 per game. So he's going to be the man in the middle again. Uh, you have Jared Jeter Gilmont being suspended for, the, I mean, being the ejected for uh, targeting. So he's going to miss the first half. So this is his chance to, you know, cement himself as, you know, the leader for this linebacking core. And my number is 20. That is the number of catches Bradley Miller has this year. And, you know, he had eight last week, seven against Navy. He's just – he's becoming that focal point of the offense that maybe people knew he was there but didn't know just exactly how dynamic and explosive he could be. And, I mean, I think when you got Bradley Miller, a big tight end like that who can also stretch the field, get sideline to sideline, creates a big matchup problem for the defense. Bobcats scoring 40 points a game. Idaho somewhere around 25. The numbers are drastically in the Bobcats' favor. Uh, we do our weekly segment of Pick'em. Uh, Keystone's undefeated. He won't stop letting me know about it in the office. I'm 2-2. Two and two. I think I'm being a little loyal, but I think I'm being loyal again this week. Um, I think the Bobcats take it. Um, I believe the Bobcats put up 45 points. I think 45-21 is my predictions, and I think the Bobcats, you know, homecoming. Homecoming. I think Tyler Jones and Robert Lowe get it done. I think Greg Mager gets a pump return touchdown. And let's see All-American know how they do in a Bobcat country. I'll go with you, too. Uh, the, they're definitely favored for this game. They're at home. First conference game. Everything's looking up. Uh, came off a big win. I think they'll win 34-17. I think Idaho will get a couple touchdowns, a field goal. Uh, David Mayo will get, you know, let's say 18 tackles because that's just what he does. And, you know, they'll just pull out a pretty, pretty easy win for sure. Now, and, Rob Rob can't do the pick-up. Con- conflict of interest, he's the SID for Texas State Bobcats, so he's the Kirk Herbstreet of the show because he's always calling it. So I will give this little segment to Rob. So I'm going to go away. I can't do the Bobcats, obviously, because of the conflict of interest, but I am going to talk about a Linehan. It is Matt Linehan, no, no for the fans, Matt Linehan's father, for the quarterback for Idaho's father, Scott Linehan. Scott Linehan, for the NFL fans, is the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys this weekend play the Houston Texans in the Battle of Texas on Sunday after the Bobcats have done their and Idaho have played their game. We'll, everyone will rewind, re, re, you know, refresh from Saturday night's you know the mayhem that will be Sunday afternoon, 12 p.m. Arlington Stadium, Jerry World, Cowboys. They go to four and one. They go 31, 14 Bold pick. over, Bold over the Houston there. Texans and, and Tyron Smith, the left tackle says to number 99 of the Texans, J.J. what? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I told Rob not to plug the Dallas Cowboys on this show, and he didn't listen, so, you know, whatever. Uh, He can talk all his noise. uh, Sunday, uh, 12 o'clock kickoff, I will be texting some certain people when it's 3 o'clock, and then we'll see uh, who who has a laugh laugh. I expect Romo to be Romo. Let's just just leave it at that. So, um, (laughs) The all-time, the best-rated quarterback in NFL history? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) 96.1? Well, you know what, though? for for us, it's all Texas Texas football, and that's what, that's what it boils down to. You know, from high school to college to the pros, is see how important it is to us here on the show. Like I said, I talked to Coach Franchoni at his lunch, and I also talked to uh, Terrence Franks after practice on Wednesday. Uh, those interviews can be found uh, on our website and. You'll listen to what they have to say about this week's show. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave it um, at the universitystar.com. You can tweet us at, univer- at University Star at Ustar underscore sports using the hashtag Field 2 Fans. For the nation's SID, Rob Berline, sports editor Keeson Ramirez, I'm your host, Otis Evergirl, and like I tell you lovely fine folks every week, see you next time. Bye. Good night, Canada. Good night, Canada.